What's up guys, Brunsnick's back, and this video is why you struggle on short patterns. Yes, short patterns are the bane of some people's existence, but there are ways that you can attack short patterns to score better, strike more, and have more fun. That's what this video is all about. Before we get into all that, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Now, let's see why you struggle on short patterns. All right, we're talking about short patterns and why you might struggle on them. And we're just gonna get right into it. Number one thing or reason why that you struggle on short patterns is you're starting too far left to start. That's it. The age old thinking is if the ball hooks, I need to move left. But on a short pattern, you really need to get further up on the gutter. That's it, playing further right, it behooves you to move out there. Like I always say on short patterns, if you don't want to win, stay in. We're bowling on PBA Wolf Pattern, short and pretty flat. I use this one as an example because this is used out on tour and it is one of the extreme short patterns here. And I'm not just going to feature urethane balls on this video, we're going to look at resins, we're going to look at all that other stuff too. But, you know, you start with a solid resin or whatever, throw your first shot and it hooks like crazy. You know, you start in your kind of same spot where you normally start just to kind of get a feel for the lanes. You throw it and you're like, my first thought is, that ball hooked a ton, the lanes are dry. I need to move more left. Don't get trapped by that. That's the worst thing you can do is get trapped into thinking, oh, they're hooking, I need to get further left. Don't get further left. Because what happens when you move further left, if I move five more off of that, guess what's gonna happen? The ball is just gonna hook as much. So don't get trapped by the lanes hooking. Don't move in off of that. Get out towards the gutter, you need to. That's very important. Now the next reason that you might struggle on short patterns is using shiny skid flippy balls to start. Rarely will you see people using bowling balls like this unless they have a ton of surface. Now this also goes into the last one, falling into the trap of, while wow, these lanes are hooking, I need something to get through the front. While this may work at first for a few shots, you're gonna have issues when the lanes begin to break down because shiny flippy balls are either gonna hook a ton off the try or they're just gonna skid past and labor. So what happens when I use a skid flippy ball out here? Once again, we're too far left. So let's try to move it out. Let's try to get out by the gutter with a shiny flippy ball and let's see exactly what happens when I do that. Could this be a viable option in the beginning? We'll find out. So having a ball, in this case, the hazmat, which is very skid flippy, a symmetrical high differential ball, when it hits that friction, when it hits the end of the pattern, it is going absolutely bonkers and sideways. We need the ball to be smooth off the spot to be able to control the lanes when they're fresh. They're so erratic, that that ball is gonna come into play later. If you start using a ball like that because your ball speed's low or whatever reason, you may struggle. When you're starting out on a short pattern, your thought process going into it should be smoother, controllable resin balls, something like NV Tour or Purple Hammer type urethane bowling balls. That's it. If you wanna get set up, and get lined up early and be able to control the pocket when everybody's having issues. Those are your two thought processes there. So for me personally, if urethane is not in play, I like to use asymmetric balls, especially balls like Envy Tour. because they are smoother, lower flaring, and more controllable off the spot. And that's gonna be a big factor in controlling the pocket 
and keeping the ball in play, not leaving anything major that I need to pick up, especially early on. Now the next reason that you might struggle on short patterns might be a little bit out of your control, but this game is all about power and speed, and the big thing is not enough ball speed. If you don't have enough ball speed, you're gonna struggle on short patterns. The whole idea to be able to strike on a short pattern is to maintain that axis rotation longer and then roll into the pocket nice and smooth, at least to start. If your ball speed is slow, the ball is not gonna maintain its axis rotation once it exits the pattern. There's a whole long way to go after that ball exits the pattern. The only way to get that ball through there is just more ball speed. So let me show you the difference between a ball that's lined up to strike and then taking a little speed off in the same zone and what it actually does to the ball reaction. All right, that one was great. Now we're gonna line up the same way and I'm just gonna take a little bit of speed off while maintaining the revs and positioning on the lanes. Let's see what happens. That's what you saw. Stayed on the same line, just threw it a little bit softer, try to maintain the same speed and revs. Look what happened to my ball reaction. I went from high flush to through the face. Just a little bit of ball speed difference can do to your ball reaction. Now I know it might be hard to work on for some, but it is absolutely critical to keep your ball speed up on shorter patterns. Now the next reason why you might struggle on short patterns is too much axis rotation early on. Now axis rotation is how much side turn you have, and that usually correlates to how much change of direction down lane. When we're starting out on fresh patterns, we don't want a big change of direction, we want a gradual and smooth change of direction. Too much axis rotation creates a lot more skid flip type reaction, and I know for some that's just how you throw it, but being more up the back of the ball and controlling the lane a little bit more front to back is going to give you higher scores and more striking percentage early on. So here's an example of how much axis rotation can play into the shot. So I'm gonna do one shot with my release normal, and then I'm gonna play more up the back of the ball. Comes off of that spot, and it absolutely boomerangs off of it. That's exactly what you don't want. You're gonna struggle with too much axis rotation. There's only so much surface you could put on a ball to tone it down and to get it rolling forward, but you really gotta work on coming more up the back of the ball and rolling it. Rolling it over end over end more, not straight, not straight ball. We're not looking to throw it straight, but something to allow you to stay straighter and smoother. Now let's throw a shot and then we'll compare them, but a little bit more up the back of the ball and this should control the pattern. I'm trying to throw it everything the same, same speed, rotation, everything, just coming more up the back. Get out of here, eight pin. So, much difference in change of direction there, much difference in roll, and obviously, I never really gave up the pocket on that shot. You're gonna score higher if the ball isn't going left, right, super angular off the spot. You're gonna leave some weird stuff, let me tell you that, I've been there. And last and certainly not least of the reasons why you struggle on short patterns is your stubbornness about urethane bowling balls. There's a reason why the purple hammer is so dominant and has been the focus of so many different rule changes that the performance of a urethane ball on a short pattern is really unmatched. There's a reason why when you go to these tournaments and you especially see you know, in college or whatever, you're gonna see a lot of purple hammers and urethane bowling balls on the rack to start on a short pattern because there's really no other ball that really performs like a urethane ball other than a urethane ball. And there's no other ball that performs like a purple hammer. That's just facts. So my advice is incorporate urethane into your arsenal, practice and get good using it. I know there's some people that just say, hey, I don't like urethane, it's never worked for me. That's a quitter's mentality. 
This is one of the most utilized tool out on the PBA Tour, or at least it was, thanks a lot. But this ball is still legal to use in all USB-C competitions. Go ahead and use purple hammers, especially when you're bowling on short patterns. Collegiate, you're gonna see these balls still used. There's a reason why purple hammers are so popular, especially on short patterns, but you see them on every pattern just about. Is that when you wanna control the pocket and you wanna stay with the scoring pace, if you wanna take tough conditions out of play, Long, short, doesn't matter, but mostly on short patterns. Purple hammer, urethane balls, get good using them. Get on the gutter. The more speed and the more revs you can apply to purple hammer and staying straighter, you can stay right on the gutter. You can play them whole different ways. Let's move right off of that shot. I wanna try to inch up towards the gutter and really play some speed here. If I got that early on, all of a sudden all those nerves, all those pre-tournament jitters, out the window, gone. If I got that look, better watch out. I'm gonna be putting up some numbers and I'm gonna be doing it consistently because my urethane shot playing out there is gonna be taking a long time to break down and go away. I'm gonna be able to adjust Minor things with ball speed, with rotation, with a urethane ball, just to tweak it to get back in the pocket and through the pins. Let's try it even more. Let's inch out even more. Let's get right up on top of it. Uh-oh, trouble. That's okay. I got around the side of it just a little bit more, but the ball did not overreact. If I'd have done that with the reactive ball, there's no chance that that ball is going high flush. I'd be lucky to leave with a 3610, but I'd probably be maybe going Brooklyn on that shine. But that's the last thing. Get good with your thing. Don't be stubborn about it. It doesn't help you to not have one of the greatest balls in your bag and not practice with it enough to get good with it because a urethane release and the urethane mentality is a lot different than resin. Now as the lanes break down, it might come out of play and that's for a future video. But for now, if you guys have any questions about why you might struggle on short patterns, please drop a comment below. If you found this video to help you in any which way, please subscribe, I really appreciate it. Thank you guys, talk to you guys soon. See you later, happy new year.